the mantra that I'm working on right now is, is trying to figure out, it's not really about how to figure out how to make life work for you. You guys, life already is working out for you. It's just not working out the way you demand it to work out. This is the great aha. And actually, if you would get out of your own bleeping way and let it unfold the way it wants to work out, your life can be so much more wild and fantastical and beautiful and humbling and probably more fulfilling in ways that you never could have imagined. But that's very difficult because we have an agenda that we try to manipulate and coerce and try to make life do our thing. So we have expectations, demands, sound familiar? I suffer from it, we all do. And then when life doesn't give you the thing that you're like, I deserve it, er, it really is like, it's painful, it creates suffering. But I really think the, the, the goal is how do we start being open to all the signs and symbols and the way it wants to work for you if you just would become a little bit more present to it. So I, um, let me just say, I'm just going to tell this little story that we'll be done, but I want to qualify this story that I'm, it's not, I mean, it's, it's kind of an interesting, beautiful thing, and I guess I was like the hero of the day, but believe me, I'm no freaking hero. I'm like, I can be an asshole, <laughs> I, I struggle, I fall apart, I oftentimes don't take my best messages, so that's, I'm not telling this story to pat myself on the back, but I want to share with you, it's really about, whoa, if you just open up to what life is constantly trying to give you and you're available to it, it's really kind of better than anything you can think. So uh, I was on the subway the other day and um, I was getting, I, I got off the subway and then I met, uh, by happenstance, there was this group that I later found out was called the National Institute uh, for Disabled uh, People, Persons. And it was a small group of like maybe 15 people and two facilitators who were maybe like 24 year old women who were really amazing. And there was a girl on the stairs who collapsed uh, going up, you know, out of the subway. And everybody was just like walking by and, you know, passing by. And I was just like, well, wait, what's happening? And the, the two women obviously needed some sort of help because the other 15 people, like, you know, there were people who had mental disabilities, some physical disabilities, they were all just kind of corralled standing there and everything had come to a standstill. So I was like, can I help? What's happened? And this girl was vomiting on the stairwell. And they just kept, her name was Amanda, and they just kept saying, like, Amanda, Amanda, can you, you know, you need to talk to us so we can help you figure out what's happening, do we need to call an ambulance, whatever. And I was like, well, what if I help, you know, Amanda get up and we'll walk outside and I'll carry her outside or whatever. And so after some time, you know, 10 minutes or something, that we finally like got her up and I helped walk her outside. And as I was walking her outside, the, the amazing thing about it is, first of all, it really goes to show you that our, our northern compass, the inner part of who we all are, is to serve. It really is it. You are most in alignment with the benevolence of the universe when you are in service. And life is always asking you to be in service. And if you could actually just start, the real question you need to ask to the universe is how can I serve? And if you started to think of acting as an opportunity to serve, so you go into an audition, how can I show up and serve the story? How can I show up and be my best self? How can I show up and solve a casting problem that they have by being at the right place at the right time and getting out of my own way and doing it? It becomes, a, a, a gift of service. So as I was walking her, and I was filled just, just to be able to do this simple human act, I just was, my heart was like, like the Grinch. It was just like, <laughs> and the, the, there was another woman in the group. She's like, who are you? And I said, I'm Tony. And she's like, <laughs> and I just kept on with Amanda. She kept saying, well, why are you here, Tony? And I was like, well, I'm just helping your friend Amanda get outside and get some air. And she's like, oh, she's like, you could come work with us. And I was like, in that moment, I was like, I could. <laughs> like, everything is possible. I could work at a disability center. So it starts to make you realize, like, who we are as actors is not just GD actors. It's so annoying to me. The spirit of who you are is so much bigger than I'm an actor. You're not. You are a citizen of the planet. You're connected to the cosmos for f sake. You're not just this little actor that has no power. Hire me. So that was the first thing. And then I thought, I thought of this today because I thought it was really weird in my own like kind of crazy journeying of desires of mine maybe that I wanted or something. 
And I was going up the stairs with her, we were almost out. And then another girl said, Tony, what are you going to be for Halloween? And I was like, oh, yes. I never really, really thought of it. And she said, you know what you can be? A prince. And I was like, oh my god. She's like, with lots of castles. But I was like, you know what? Maybe somewhere in my desires a long time ago, I want, I'm totally going to start crying. I don't know why. It's so bizarre. But it was so, like, beautiful. I was like, maybe I wanted somebody to call me a prince in some sort of permutation that made sense to me. And it was such a beautiful moment with 15 strangers I'm never going to probably see again. You guys, that's the power you wield. You've got to let life show you where you can get up and make the most magic. It's not just, ah, I have to be on XYZ. I have to have the perfect agent. Yes, we need to keep hustling and moving forward and trying to get those things that you have desires toward and for. But I think if you start to like just change the conversation and not let it all come from the egoic needs, you'll start to see actually, conversely, weirdly, counterintuitively, the egoic needs will also get fulfilled.